G'day! So today's video is a special one, and I want to give a big thanks to Drawing Chaos for sharing his world with me and allowing me to explore its wonders. Now I'm certain that a lot of people watching will already be familiar with his work, but for those that aren't, you should definitely go check out his channel, and I'll make sure that I leave a link to it in the description. For those that are familiar with Chaos's projects, you'll know that he likes to approach them not just as a factory, but as a work of art. Because, in fact, he is an artist as well. So not only does his channel have satisfactory videos, but he also showcases a lot of his awesome drawings and artwork. And I'll be taking a look at a couple of my favourites at the end of this video. So, with that out of the way, let's dive into it. As you can see from the outside of his main base, Everything is filled with detail. There's no big, plain wall panels. And the amount of effort that's gone into making this look beautiful is clearly evident. I also think that the black and white colour scheme he's chosen just works so well with the theme of the build. It kind of looks like one of those ancient temples that you see in movies. Moving on to the inside of his base, the intricate detailing and creativity doesn't stop. In fact, it's a common theme that you will notice in all of his architecture throughout the world. As you go through the main entrance to the base, you can see time has been taken to ensure that the walls, the ceiling and the floor are eye-catching. If you continue straight down this path, you'll end up at his power generation area, which houses an abundance of fuel generators which are being run on turbo fuel. Now, I'm not sure exactly how many generators he has here, but he is producing a massive 100,000 megawatts of power, and he hasn't even got nuclear power up and running yet. I really appreciate the care that has gone into preventing these pipes from becoming a spaghetti mess. It really helps calm my OCD. And it looks great. Drawing Chaos has decided to use the hidden underside of his main base as a means of transporting the vast amount of fluids and produce from his train stations to the areas that they will be needed in the base. Moving on to the production areas of the main base, it's great to see he's chosen to use a lot of the alternate recipes to make the lower tier items. Specifically, the ones that require you to use a refinery and add water to the recipe. These recipes are more involved to set up, but they're incredibly efficient. Which is a good idea if you want to be able to consume the maximum amount of resource from the world. Now at this stage, his production lines are only up to the stage of producing the lower tier items. But as you'll see, his base has been planned with a lot of room to grow. And of course I'm sure this project is far from complete. As we move out into the world, I just want to point out his style of train intersection. I just reckon this is so cool. And it's a theme that he's also decided to keep using for his train system all over the world.
If you come over to the ocean, you'll see the extensive water farm, which supplies his main base with all its water, utilizing a train. And if we pan over to the left here, you'll notice a little thank you note that Chaos has made for his viewers. Hey dude, I think you might need to upgrade that sign. <laughs> If you thought that water farm for his main base was decent, then check out this beast. This is what he's going to use to supply all the water that he needs for his nuclear project. Okay, so just look at this. This has got to be one of the coolest things I've seen anyone build in Satisfactory. Just look at it. Dude, I love this thing. And just as a little side note, uh, not only do the trains look cool, they actually go to an individual station and are uh, getting used where they're meant to be used. It's not just there for looks, it's actually working properly. So we'll move along to where all this water is needed this epic nuclear power plant setup. And you can see where he's begun the monstrous task of connecting all the pipes and contracting a little pipe madness, I'm sure. The style that he's chosen to lay out these power plants looks awesome and I don't want to imagine the nightmare this will be when it comes time to connect it all up. If we take a look underneath this power plant, you'll see that in classic Chaos style, the detailing has not been spared. When we come over to the Northern Ocean, you can see that he's chosen to use the oil found here to make a ridiculous amount of fuel generators. And it's now you will probably realise why he has over 100,000 megawatts of power. I'm not sure how many generators he has here, but I'm just going to say all of them. And he hasn't even hooked up the second floor yet, so the potential here is huge. As impressive as that is, what really got my attention over here is this section of pipes. Man, that looks clean. My OCD is tingling. Moving across the world for a bit now, and I found what I'm guessing was his starter base which comes complete with a skate park. Other activities include this giant Galton board. Now, I'm sure people are going to tell me that this is called something else, but I googled it, and this is a Galton board. Now, I almost thought I'd seen everything in this world, until I discovered another mini base down here. And what do you think he's built down here? That's right more fuel generators. Man, this guy loves power. I don't know what this blue building over here is meant to be, 
but I'm pretty sure it's a shrine to the awesome shop. Has to be. So that's it for the Chaos Factory. But I just want to quickly show another one of his save files because I just think the concept and design is so cool. Now this isn't just a pretty tower, this is the Tower of Chaos. That's what I'm calling it anyway. It's actually a giant maze. In fact, it's many mazes built into one. The idea is that a hypertube sends you from the bottom to the top and using nothing but a set of blade runners, you have to work your way down. I don't want to give too much away, so just a sneak peek of some of the style of mazes that Drawing Chaos has designed. It's a really cool concept, and just another example of how you can have fun and be creative in Satisfactory without focusing on the production and maths side of the game. Alright, so that's going to do it for the Drawing Chaos World Tour. Before I go, I'm just going to show a couple of his drawings that I really liked. Alright, so here's one of Drawing Chaos's hand-drawn works of art. And I just think this is awesome, hey? Like, it's the, obviously the coffee cup from uh, Satisfactory. You've got the coffee stain emblem as a coffee stain down there. Uh, little fix-it tick. Um, it's just cool man and like you can watch videos of him drawing this artwork on time-lapse on his YouTube channel so if you're into that uh, check it out it's awesome uh, and just another picture um, this one took I think over 30 hours to do and he's got a time-lapse of him drawing this and uh, it's really cool to look at and this picture's friggin awesome hey um, yeah, he doesn't just do satisfactory art either, he does a lot of other art, um, so it's pretty unique. Um, someone that does satisfactory videos and does um, really awesome artwork, so go check it out. Catch us later!